Dun, 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 dun. What's up YouTube, I'm Blake and this is my first video about Apple's next generation professional laptop, the new MacBook Pro with Retina display released on June 11th, 2012. Now this won't be the first MacBook Pro Retina display video you see on YouTube and it won't be the last, but bear with me as I try to put my spin on things. So let's get right to it. Compared to the tried and true regular MacBook Pro, I have here one of the 2011 models. The new Retina MacBook Pro is actually thinner by about 25%. It's lighter by about a pound. It has the same aluminum finish, but I thought the finish on the new Retina MacBook Pro was actually a little bit smoother. Could be just me, but it was uh, one of my observations. The thumb scoop in the front is flat. I know it's a minor detail, but it's the first time I've seen that on an Apple laptop. I kind of like it, actually. Um, the power button, which used to be up here, is now in the keyboard like on the MacBook Airs and otherwise on the outside Apple took away a lot of stuff there's no more Ethernet port though Apple makes a Thunderbolt adapter for that you can see my video about it there's no more Firewire 800 but Apple also makes a Thunderbolt adapter for that there's no more dedicated audio line in on the side like there is on the old MacBook Pro models or the non Retina MacBook Pro models there's no more battery status indicator, which I was kind of surprised that they took that out. That was nice to have right over here. You just press a button and see um, some LEDs light up and tell you how much battery you have left, but that's not on the Retina MacBook Pro model. Not a huge deal, but it will be missed by some people, I'm sure. There's no more sleep light in the front. You can't see it here, but on the old model, there's actually an LED on the front here so that when you close it um, and it's sleeping, it will kind of snore. None of that on the new Retina MacBook Pro. There's no more Kensington lock slot. On the regular non-Retina MacBook Pros, there's a lock slot right next to the disk drive to protect your laptop from getting stolen in certain situations. I never used it. I assume a lot of people probably never did either, and they took it out on the new Retina MacBook Pros. And the last one, I thought this was kind of strange. Pretty much Apple laptop that I can remember for the last decade or, or more um, has said on the front what it is. Here you can see this is a MacBook Pro and on the new Retina MacBook Pro there's no such labeling. But even though they took so much away Apple did add a couple ports. There's an extra Thunderbolt port bringing the count to two now. Uh, you'll probably need that for the adapters that you'll be buying. Still two USB ports but they're actually USB 3 now instead of USB 2.0. And actually, a welcome addition, I'm sure, for a lot of people, there's an HDMI port on the right-hand side. And obviously, the biggest and most important addition to the new Retina MacBook Pro is the display itself. It's a great display. Four times the resolution compared to the regular non-Retina MacBook Pro. The resolution on the new model is 2880 by 1800, which is double height and double width of the 1440 by 900 resolution for the regular non-Retina MacBook Pros. It's got IPS technology, which means it looks great from almost any angle. This is a feature that I'm personally very excited about. It's something that we've come to be used to in our iPhones and iPads, but it is a first for Apple laptops as far as I know. And the other difference is there's no front glass on the Retina display. And what does that mean for you? Mainly two things. It means the display itself is thinner, which, yeah, that's nice. But probably the biggest difference it's got much less glare. Apple claims I think 75 or 80 percent less glare and I kind of believe them. So this is the older model again, the 2011 model, and the display on this is going to look just like the 2012 model. Um, if, you, if I move around back here you can see quite a bit of glare on this model because of the actual glass front. Let me move and see if I can try to make some... I don't know if you can see anything, but I think probably the glare on this one it seems to me anyway is much reduced I believe Apple's estimates so that is a welcome change so a very very nice screen that's just going to be a joy to use uh, I and I'm sure many of you can't wait for Apple to get it into some of their other laptops that's all I wanted to cover for the outside on the inside a lot has changed also let's look at the specs so the highlights here obviously faster processor the new 2012 model MacBook Pro's Retina and non-Retina feature Intel's third generation core processors, codename Ivy Bridge. Welcome addition there. Faster memory, faster SSD. You can see my 2011 model has an SSD, but that's only because I did an upgrade. If you've been a subscriber of mine, you might remember the video. Um, the regular non-Retina MacBook Pros still come with traditional hard drives. 
and faster integrated and dedicated graphics, each with additional memory. So those are the main differences between these two laptops, the Retina and non-Retina MacBook Pro. We're going to move on to some side-by-side -side testing. I just wanted to point out here too, I turned these off and look at the glare on this model compared to this model. There's pretty much no glare, that's, that's really cool. Alright, I'm going to turn these both on at the same time. They're going to boot into a new user profile and we'll see how long they take. The new one is ready to go. And the old one, not that bad either. Obviously, I upgraded to an SSD in there, so that could explain uh, the competitiveness. Normally, I would do a sleep, awake, and a shutdown test also, but I don't think that's important here. They're both very, very fast. Let's move on to the iStat Nano widget. You can see we're looking at battery details right now. On my 2011 model, only 19 cycles. That's kind of sad. 97% health with 67 29 milliamp hours and it's 100% charged. Only one cycle on my new Retina MacBook Pro health 100% with 8746 milliamp hours, also charged 100%. The fans on both models right now, uh, right fan is about the same, right around 2000 RPM, and the left fan, pretty much the same story here, but the left fan on the new model is reporting that it's 2162 right now, so it's going a little bit faster. These are pretty normal. Um, I'm in a very hot room right now. I, I don't hear the fans at all. They're, they're pretty much dead silent. Um, let's move on to temperatures. These do not quite match up, so I'm just going to comment on the ones that are the same. The GPU on the old model, 101 degrees. This is in Fahrenheit. GPU on the new model, also 101. Diode, 43 degrees, 41 degrees on the old model, and 101 degrees on the new model. Heatsink B, 99 degrees on the old model, and 99 degrees, 95 degrees on the new model. And enclosure bottom, 90 degrees on the old model, uh, 92 degrees on the new model. So I think these are going to be running pretty much the same temperature-wise, at least as far as the user can tell under a light load. Here are the Geekbench 2 results for both models. Remember, Geekbench 2 measures processor and memory performance. 9619 for the old model and 11905 for the new model. It's probably fair to mention at this point this particular 2011 MacBook Pro re was released in the early part of the year and they actually did release another model, a spec bumped model later in 2011 that would result in a higher score than this but still um, probably not any anywhere close to the 11905 of the new model. Geekbench 2 is available in the Mac App Store, as is Novabench, which is our next test. Novabench is free in the Mac App Store. Novabench score on the old model, 873 versus 1125 on the new model. As for subscores, I'll read them in case you can't see them. Uh, memory subscore, 131 for the old model, 180 for the new model. CPU subscore, 586 for the old model, 758 for the new model. Graphics subscore 128 for the old model and 125 for the new model. And hardware subscore 28 for the old model, 62 for the new model. Next is the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. This app is also free on the Apple App Store. Before we start, I want to mention as a reminder this model has an upgraded Intel SSD in it, so it's probably got a bit of an advantage over a regular. MacBook Pro without uh, an SSD and just a regular hard drive. So keep that in mind. Here we go. Write speeds 113 on the old model, 384. These are megabytes per second on the new model. Read speed 319 on the old model, 451 on the new model megabytes per second. So Apple wasn't kidding about the flash drives they put in the new Retina MacBook Pros. Very, very fast. I think users will be pleased. And the last test I wanted to do, the Almighty Cinebench. Dun, dun, dun. Here's their quick disclaimer I'm obligated to show you. I hope you didn't miss that. Uh, let's do the first test, OpenGL. Now remember, the graphics on the new one are quite a bit better, but it's also pushing four times as many uh, pixels. So just keep that in mind. We'll see what they come out as. 
and the results are in 21.09 frames per second for the old model versus 34.67 frames per second for the new model. A very respectable number, I think. Let's move on to the CPU test. And the results are in 4.84 points on the CPU test for the 2011 model versus 6.2 points on the CPU test for the new 2012 models with Intel's latest Ivy Bridge processors. And that's all I wanted to cover in this first video for the new 2012 MacBook Pro with Retina display. I hopefully was able to distinguish myself from some other MacBook Pro Retina display videos that you might have already seen on YouTube. If you guys have any questions, comments, or general feedback, I'd love to hear about it. Drop me a line in the comments section or send me a message. Otherwise, I hope you guys like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Blake, and thanks for watching.